All right, let's have another episode of the Politics Barn. It is the year 2024, the 2nd of January, Tuesday. Hope everybody had a happy holiday season. My gift to you all was not making any episodes of the Politics Barn. I figured, oh, it's the season of uh, merriment and fellowship and goodwill among men. And the last thing we want to talk about is how we're having, heading towards an impending civil war and we'll have divorces and families break up because one side uh, wants to see justice and the other side wants communism. So I thought, well, we don't want to talk about that around Christmas. Well, Christmas is over. So time to get down to the nitty gritty. Ugly times coming up. No doubt about that. We're heading for some very nasty, ugly, rocky times. Uh, the Chinese curse, somewhat, well, I guess some people say it's a proverb. I think others say it's a curse. Uh, may you live in interesting times. Uh, and 2024 almost certainly promises to be interesting. And I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could say 2020 was pretty interesting, wasn't it? And that's about the worst thing I've ever seen. You know, locked in your homes, rights taken away from you with no redress. And, and we're hoping that it doesn't get like that again, but who knows? You know, who knows what ha uh, is in store for us? So where are we at? Uh, when we left you last time, the Republicans were once again pulling a disastrous showing in an election, losing in the off-year 23 elections, uh, which, if the Democrats were as unpopular as it seems they are, you would think they'd get crushed in these elections, but they didn't, they're not, and of course the main reason for that is right here, abortion. We've uh, got to accept the fact, it's been proven to us over and over again, that Americans want nothing more than to kill their babies, that uh, you may think the NFL or NASCAR or Taylor Swift are popular. No, this is the country of killing babies, and that's what we want to do. And unfortunately, the Republicans are on the side of, we don't want you to kill your babies. Well, Americans don't want to hear that. Americans want the option to be able to kill their babies. Um, I'd like to think that they... Even the people that want to kill their babies, I would like to think when push comes to shove and it really comes down to killing the baby that they might have second thoughts and go, all right, I just wanted the option. You know, now that I'm really down to the nitty gritty, maybe I'll keep the kid. Um, I'd like to think that. I don't really believe that, but I'd like to think it. But at any rate, so where are we at right now? You know, uh, has things improved? Since then, as far as when I say things improved, as far as what are the chances that we can throw these communist grifters out of office and restore some sense of sanity to this country in the national elections that are pretty much going to start in nine to ten months? Now you're saying, well, don't you know exactly when it starts? No, no one does. It's election season anymore. We don't have actual election day. We have election season. States uh, allow early voting, mail-in voting, all sorts of crazy stuff. Basically, it lasts for 10 to 12 weeks, starting in, I believe, in September in some states. You can start voting in September. So uh, that's good and bad. I'll, I'll explain how that's possibly good uh, in a minute. But yeah, it's good. as Yogi Berra would have said, it's getting late early. It's getting late early. This election is going to be upon us before we even know it. So where are we? Where are we? And let me check my time here. 9.05, okay. That's... Uh, Try not to make an hour-long episode. Um, we're going to make a lot more of these episodes now, now that the holidays are over and we're getting closer to... I, I, I don't know if there's been a more momentous election. 2020, I think 2024 will surpass it. 
in uh, momentousness, if that's a word. Uh, 1860, uh, the, I think 24 will probably outdo that. And that led to a civil war only. <laughs> so I think that's what we're kind of looking at here. Uh, at any rate, we'll make more of these episodes as we get down to the nitty gritty in the coming months. Um, I made a list here of good and bad. And that's from the standpoint of a sane person, i.e. a Republican. Uh, whether we have a chance, in my previous video uh, where I was lamenting the disastrous showing of the Republicans in the 23 off-year elections, I put the chances of retaking the White House about 10%. I'm a little more optimistic at this juncture, a little. I'm not going to get optimistic, optimistic. I'm a little more optimistic. Let's tell you why. Currently, Donald Trump is polling well, if, if you can believe that. He's polling better than what happened in the uh, off-year elections there the uh, second Tuesday in November. Uh, Trump has pulled out to a 2.3% national lead over President Joe Biden. Uh, that is based on the real clear politics average of polls. And I don't know, they, I don't know which polls they count and which ones they don't. I think for the most part, they count all national polls on their website. They have it listed which polls they count. I like real clear politics um, largely because the like the Nate Silver's 538 website, he's just a died in the wool communist. I mean, you just can't take anything that guy says seriously without worrying that he's going to skew the results towards what he wants to happen. So I find 538 not reliable. Whereas real clear politics, I think, is a little more honest. So their average of the polls has Trump up 2.3 nationally. Now you're going to say, well, that's not much. And that, that's, that's why, why is that significant? Why is that significant? Because Trump's never done that before. He has never led in any national polling against the Democrat ever. And I mean ever, not in the 26 run up, not in the 20 run or the 16 run up, the 20 run up, not even in the election itself in 16 that he won. Remember, he lost the national vote. He lost, I think, by 1.5 percent. Don't quote me on that. I'm going by memory. He managed to win enough electoral votes by winning the swing states to make him president. Uh, but in the Biden election, I believe he was, uh, I think he lost the national vote by, oh, I don't even know. I'm going to say two or three or four percent, I believe. So, it, it, and again, don't quote me on that. I'm going by memory. At the, according to Real Clear Politics, at this point in 20, the 2020 cycle, Biden... was up by 4.5%, 4.5%. Now, he didn't win by that much. In both cycles, 16 and 20, the polls overestimated the strength of the Democrats, and Trump overperformed the poll, the poll, the polls, the polling results, et cetera, et cetera, when he actually did the election itself. So... Trump has never led. So this is significant, the fact that Trump has now pulled out to a lead. I guess said another way, Donald Trump has never been more popular or powerful than he is right now, uh, which is probably saying something, even when he was president. So, eh, you know, what do we make of this? Uh, Biden has some work to do to catch up. Now, you know, I've said... If you're about to say, well, you said the polls don't count. Yes, I have said that. And no, they don't count. No one's ever been elected by a poll. Um, 
I think Trump's strength is somewhat exaggerated. I think Trump's strength is probably more an indictment of Biden and his weakness than it is of people liking Trump, uh, which makes me nervous because Biden is replaceable. So I think it's a fact that people are starting to look a little closer at Biden and say, yeah, we really don't like this guy all that much. We really don't. Uh, uh, he's not all that likable. You know, he hasn't done a whole lot to help us. Um, he's way too old. We don't think he's actually calling the shots himself. I mean, how could he? This guy can't string three coherent sentences together. So we really don't think that this guy's actually in charge. Someone's pulling his strings. Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the Hunter Biden uh, investigations that everybody has poo-pooed as not meaningless and nonsense and where's that going and why are we wasting the world's time, blah, blah, blah. They're having an effect and a positive effect. People are looking at Biden now and saying, yeah, I, I, I always thought Trump was crooked, but I guess Biden's just as crooked. It's like, shazam, the light dawns, hooray for you. So, yes. These are all reasons why Trump has edged out to this 2.3% lead. Now, to make that even better, he's ahead even further than that in the swing states. What are the swing states? The ones that basically put Biden in the White House in 20, and more or less put Trump in the White House in 16. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, Georgia, Arizona, we'll throw New, uh, Nevada in there. Um, traditional swing states that I believe have swung one way or the other that are no longer swing states, uh, Florida, Ohio, Virginia, Colorado, these, these are no longer important, I would say. In other words, if Donald Trump wins Virginia, it's going to be a red night. It's not even going to be close. It's a Republican blowout. Uh, conversely, if Joe Biden wins Florida, well, you know, get, you might as well get, your, get the handcuffs out because we're all going to jail. Anyone that voted for uh, uh, Donald Trump, the FBI or whatever Joe Biden's uh, special hit squad, they'll come out and arrest us all because... That's it for us. That would be a huge blue wipeout. And it would be a disaster. So, that's where we're at with the polls there. Like I said, Trump up in the swing states, even more than two, you know, he's up four or five percent in some of these states. Now, again, I think that's overstated somewhat. And I do uh, expect these polls will tighten. Certainly if Biden, the polls, I believe right now, are a sign to Jill, Dr. Jill Biden, trying to frighten her and her demented husband out of the race. I don't think it's going to work. Uh, they're trying, and I don't know what else they can throw at the Bidens. Uh, they're threatening Hunter with his freedom and, and perhaps using him as leverage but I don't know it's going to work. Um, I, I still think there's a decent chance that Biden may ride this right into the November elections. And, you know, you may be electing a cadaver. Uh, but we've not, <laughs> Americans don't care. They just don't care about that. I mean, we elected John Fetterman. He's brain dead. If we elected him as a senator here in Pennsylvania. People don't care that he's physically incapable of doing the job. They just don't care. And uh, Joe Biden, I believe, is when a push comes to shove, people aren't going to give a shit that the guy is totally incapable of doing the job. They're going to vote for him it, it, just because he's not Trump. So I'm still pessimistic. These uh, polls will narrow. I believe, should this stay the same, Trump and Biden as the two potential nominees? And that is the most likely scenario that Trump and Biden will be on the ballots in November, and uh, Biden will almost certainly at that point be leading in the polls.
I, I would uh, argue pretty strongly for that. Now, how will that finish? We don't know. But I would be very, very surprised if the polling outfits, which are run pretty much all by communist outfits, are going to show Trump in a position of strength leading into election season. They're not. They're, they're, they're trying to suppress your vote. They're trying to suppress your enthusiasm. So, like I said, why is, then why is Trump ahead? Well, they're probably trying to either uh, scare Biden out of the race or they're just basically uh, just in a moment of honesty, you know, showing you what's actually going on on the ground before they start pumping up Biden. Other good things. So we're trying to be optimistic here and get excited. Lawfare going slowly. Now, I'm not sure how much the Democrats are achieving with the lawfare. Uh, four different cases being brought against Trump, all supposed to go to trial here in the next nine months. <laughs> so... That's why I mean it's going slowly. I think the Democrats have fumbled here in that they've forgotten one of the core rules of life that everything always takes longer than you think it's going to take. So they're going to try to bring these four major cases against the most popular politician in America. And that's not, I'm not making that up. Based on these polling averages, uh, Real Clear Politics also then has a, 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 a statistic called betting averages, where I guess uh, on your offshore markets, uh, Britain, the islands, what have you, you can bet on who's going to win the presidency. Well, right now, they've got Trump at like a 37% chance, Biden at a 31% chance, and then more or less others take up the rest. So Trump is the betting favorite by a small margin to win the presidency. He is the most popular politician running for president in America. So it, 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 this lawfare idea that you're going to take that man and you're going to put him before four different juries in the next nine months, I think it's just nonsense. They're not going to be able to do it. There's not enough time. Court cases just take forever. And even though I do believe that in some of these cases, they're completely rigged in that the prosecutors are totally in bed with the judge and they... Hell, they may even actually be meeting together, even though that would be highly illegal. I put nothing past these people. So there would be a high level of coordination and that some of this may be rushed through. Well, you know, sometimes you can't control everything. As uh, um, Oberfuhrer Jack Smith has already figured out, Oberfuhrer was going to then try to rush this case through. He wants to start it the day before Super Tuesday. Um, that, that no coincidence, I mean, you know, that, that's not a coincidence, of course. It's meant to try to hurt Trump's election prospects, that the day before people go to elect Donald Trump as the Republican nominee, he wants the headlines to be Trump goes on trial in Washington, D.C. for multiple felonies. That's the headline that's going to be out there on the Monday before Super Tuesday. Not a coincidence. Um, but he's running into uh, delays because the Supreme Court is almost certainly going to be involved in this case in some fashion. And he doesn't control them. So this is where this is slowing his case down. I've even heard other people mention the fact that this case might not even go before a jury before the election, that the Supreme Court may get involved in some of these issues with this case and just slow it down to the fact that he can't bring it before his rigged jury before the election, which I think would be hilarious. In other words, Trump would get all the benefits of being persecuted 
and have to bear none of the penalty. Uh, that would be a win, 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 win for Trump. Uh, now, will that happen? Probably not. The communists will find a way to get Trump before the rigged jury. And I've said previously that I do believe Trump will be convicted in one of these rigged trials. I mean, you're going to set him in front of 12 hardcore Marxist Democrat voters? They're not going to give this guy a fair shake. They don't care what the consequences are. Uh, they just see hatred and they're going to throw him in jail. Now, this is the point on that. Their decision is irrelevant. Them throwing him in jail, irrelevant, doesn't mean anything. This is not a legal trial. This is a political trial. The jury is not those 12 communists sitting in Washington. It's us. It's everybody out here in the rest of the United States. It's all the voters in the rest of the United States. We're the jury. We can decide whether he's guilty or not. Where we're going to make that decision is at the ballot box. You don't like what's going on? You think this is unfair? This makes you feel uh, squeamish? This makes you feel a little dirty? Good. Vote Trump. That's uh, all you got to do. Vote Trump. Put an end to this nonsense, this bullshit, this banana republic crap, which these... Democrats are foisting upon us. Uh, that's what we've got to hope happens. And, and I do think almost it will happen. You know, I've, the polls I have seen, the most recent one was a Wall Street Journal poll, and it only showed a very small bump for Biden if Trump was convicted, like a five points. In other words, it went from Trump up four nationally to uh, Biden up one if Trump was convicted. In other words, some squeamish uh, independents and never Trump or Republicans would go from, oh no, I can't vote for Trump. He's been convicted. It's like he's been convicted in a show trial and now you're, you're upset. Okay. You know, I'm, I guess there'll be some people that'll switch sides, but I don't know there's going to be many, you know, 5%. There might be another 5% to decide, you know what, this is, this is just too much. It's obvious what's going on here. You got the most popular man in America as far as running for president and a guy who's almost likely to lose at this point. And this is his solution to put his opponent in jail? This is America. We don't do that. They do that in totalitarian dictatorships the kind that we used to learn about in school and, and laugh at or be afraid of and fight in wars and such because they were the bad guys. We were the good guys. They were the bad guys. Now apparently we're the bad guys if we're doing stuff like that. So that, you know, I don't know how that'll shake down. If he is convicted, I don't think it's going to hurt too much, we'll see. I think a lot of it's going to be how the trial's conducted. And again, these guys have no case. They have no way to argue successfully that's going to convince a moderate person that Trump's a monster. That's the thing they just keep running out right now, and I think it's a political loser. Trump's Hitler. Trump's Hitler. Trump is Hitler. You've got to get this guy in jail. You cannot possibly let this guy stand for election. He's Hitler. You can't let Hitler stand for election. No. And I can't imagine anyone with an IQ over room temperature is falling for that. We, we lived through four years of Trump. I don't remember political enemies being thrown in jail. I, I don't remember content being censored on the internet. This has all happened under the Democrat administration. That's who's been doing this sort of stuff. But, yo, not, you know, Hitler, please, please, give me a break. Leads me to my next point, this 14th Amendment nonsense, where two states now, Colorado and Maine, one in Colorado, it was a 4-3 split towards throwing Trump off the ballot in the Colorado Supreme Court. 
all Democrats, by the way, all Marxist d judges, and three of them voted for Trump. <laughs> so that's how extreme this idea is, that the 14th Amendment was written uh, to keep Civil War uh, Southerners from just moving right back and resuming their position in the federal government after waging a war for four years against the Union. Um, they're trying to use that amendment and apply it to Trump. And it's absolute, utter, crap, nonsense, bullshit, has no basis in law, has no basis in reality, has no sense, but that's what you're trying to do. So th four communist judges in Colorado bought this, decided to go for it. In Maine, just one person, the Secretary of State, who really is just an, an appointed, well, I guess it's an elected position. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if she was elected or appointed in Maine. I mean, in Pennsylvania, it's an elected position, but I'm not sure in Maine. More or less, this person's just in charge of running the election. So she's just decided, no, oh, yeah, I'm not going to let Donald Trump be on my ballot. I'm just not going to allow it because I don't like it. That's it. <laughs> and I think this just exposes the Democrats for the absolute extreme totalitarians that they are. This is a good thing for us. This is a good thing. Well, well not if Trump's on, not on the ballot, we're going to have, we, it's going to be hard winning. The Supreme Court is almost certainly going to step in and put an end to this nonsense. There's at least five reliable votes on the Supreme Court that I believe are going to back common sense. Six probably. I've heard some people say that all nine of them are going to get together and say, okay, this is a bridge too far. We can't, can't sign off on this. You can't just, the states can't just not put a major presidential candidate on the ballot because he was an insurrectionist, something he's never been charged with, never been tried for, let alone found guilty of. So I think it's a very good chance the Supreme Court will, in fact, I've almost just chalked this up to this will happen. Now, if it doesn't happen, we can have a whole series of uh, videos made on that, and they'll be on Rumble because we'll talk about stuff that we can't even talk about here on YouTube uh, because then it is time to go to the mattresses, as they would say in The Godfather. But we're not at that stage yet. We're nowhere close to that yet because this is never going to come to fruition. However, I want you to think about this, though. What if there was a Democrat majority on the Supreme Court? There has been, in the history of the United States, a Democrat majority, majorities, on the United States Supreme Court. If there was right now, and they're pulling this stuff, Donald Trump would not be on the ballot. We would not have a free and fair election at that point then, yes, you would say, what country am I living in? It's certainly not the United States. When there's, people are arbitrarily just taking candidates off the ballot, basically deciding who wins a state's electoral votes before any votes are cast. It's a real-time real -time election interference is what you're observing you know, you're observing the Colorado Supreme Court pulling real-time election interference, the Secretary of State in Maine. What's funny is, I think they're getting very dangerous to the standard they're blathering about that allegedly Trump has committed. You know, God help them if Trump wins. You might see maybe the Secretary of State in Maine up against the wall for treason. I think that would be fun. Now, I don't expect that to happen, but... And I don't expect that to, yeah, I don't want to go that far and say that'd be fun. Because that would lead to a lot of ramifications where I think it would end up being ugly. You know, your worst part of yourself will say, yeah, I want those people to feel pain. But then, you know, you know that's the wrong thing to say because you're a Christian and you can't say that. 
and you're not even supposed to think it. Uh, but you would love to see them just feel a little bit of the shoes on the other foot when they're running around trying to steal an election. And that's what they're doing right now. They're trying to steal the election in real time. We're watching them do it. So they won't get too far with the 14th Amendment. In fact, it helps Trump when they're doing that. It exposes them as the absolute crazy insurrectionist assholes that they are. They'll do anything to hold power. That's what we've been saying, and they're demonstrating it right now as they hysterically run around calling Trump Hitler, and he's done nothing of the sort to earn that. And if you think that, you're an idiot. I'm sorry you are just, you don't have the sense that God gave geese. I'm just sorry. It's tough when you don't you know, have any common sense. It's hard to get it. I don't know what to tell you. But if you think Donald Trump's Hitler, you're really pretty stupid. So even David Axelrod, who is Obama's hitman, uh, political advisor, whatever, he's running around trying to tamp this down, going, hey, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa, enough with this 14th Amendment stuff. This is bad. This is going to backfire on us. It's not bad in the fact that it exposes, you know, in other words, it's not bad in that it enrages the Republicans and could lead to tit for tat, maybe a real violent outcome. No, he doesn't think that at all. All he thinks is it's bad because it's going to blow back in his face. If he thought he could get away with it, he'd say, yeah, let's do it. He knows he can't. He knows people aren't going to stand for this. That's why he's trying to tamp it down. Hey, ho, hey, easy with this, brother Marxist. Easy, easy. Normal Americans are going to see this for what it is. We can't be doing this openly. Now, if we can steal the election behind the scenes and no one knows, let's do it. We've done it before. But we absolutely can't be being caught doing this stuff. We don't need, we're not at that point yet. That's what Axelrod is saying. So that's where, hey, have at it, Marxists. Go ahead, 14th Amendment. Give me more. Give me more of that. Absolutely. That helps Trump. That helps Trump. Elon Musk, um, I think he's pretty well declared he's on the Trump team. Now it's a question of how much he'll be on the Trump team. He's a cold wild card. I don't think he's going to hurt us. You know, I hope he doesn't flip to the other side with all his other oligarchs. Bezos, Zuckerberg, Gates, etc. All the leftist oligarchs. I hope he stays neutral at best. I mean, the good thing about that is X, formerly Twitter, will hopefully be an open and free forum. If X, formerly Twitter, was an open and free forum in 20, Trump would have won. I think that's pretty clear. I think I could say that without reservation. Why? Why do you say that? That's bullshit. Blah, 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 blah. No. I believe that because the Hunter Biden laptop story would have disseminated more widely, more widely Thoroughly, in fact, I would say that that story would have gotten traction. And there's polling data out there now where those questions have been asked as far as, had you known uh, that this uh, was going on, would it have changed your vote in 2020? And I think enough data is out there that you could say, you know, Trump would have won. There would have been enough votes that it would have flipped based on the Biden corruption that, now remember, the, the Bidens just lied about it, just totally lied through their teeth. Uh, the thing came up in one of the debates. Uh, Joe Biden whipped out a letter signed by 51 spooks from the deep state saying it was Russian disinformation. The spooks either had no idea one way or the other and were simply parroting the Democrat line 
Uh, Joe Biden certainly knew it was Hunter's laptop, so he was lying through his teeth. And uh, people just uh, accepted it. They just, okay, whatever. I don't know. Uh, Biden says it's uh, not his laptop. I, I don't know. No, he's lying, of course. And any, anybody that actually looked at the laptop at that point knew he was lying. But the casual voter just doesn't dig into that sort of thing. And it went, they got away with it. They got away with it. So now your chances of getting away with that type of stuff with X being a free and open forum, eh, that's advantage Republicans. I don't know how many points that's worth, but it's definitely advantage Republicans there. So, and, and this is just off the top of my head. I wrote this down in 10 minutes. I'm probably forgetting some things. There are definitely some selling points here for the Republicans that things are not looking as bad, perhaps, as I made them look two months ago. Now, what's bad? Well, abortion, that hasn't changed. Uh, there are a lot of angry women, few men, mostly women, who want to kill their babies, and they are going to be out in force to vote for the, the Democrats because the Democrats are pro-killing women, or uh, pro-killing babies. I guess uh, some of those babies would be female. So, yeah, I guess you could say that. Uh, but definitely. And that hurts the Republicans. It definitely hurts their ability to win elections. Trump, will he be able to uh, uh, de defuse that issue? I think he'll try because, frankly, I don't think he gives a shit about abortion one way or the other. Uh, and I think of all the other issues that we have right now in this country, I think it pales in comparison to some of these other issues, uh, like free speech, uh, the government being used as the party in power's uh, personal plaything, where they can just persecute their political enemies at will. That's not the way the Constitution's supposed to be handled. It's not the way the country's supposed to run. Uh, the fact that we're, we have runaway inflation in this country, that We've got three quarters of the population falling behind and getting poorer. Uh, these are major issues, I think, compared to whether or not we're going to kill babies. Which, uh, frankly, nothing's changed. In other words, there's some states that are saying you can't kill babies here. Well, you take, get a bus ticket and go over to the next state and you can kill your baby. I mean... I don't think there's anybody out there, if they really want to kill their baby, they cannot do so legally in, at this time in this country. Uh, I really don't think it's impossible to just, it might make it a little more difficult. You might have to get a bus ticket, but you can still go kill your baby. One billion dollars. That's a number I've heard that the Democrats have in their war chest. Trump is not going to have any money. He's going to be spending it all on his lawyers. Um, you're going to see ads on TV 10 to 1. Tr Biden's been on TV in Pennsylvania here since June, just running ad after ad, telling you how good things are, how wonderful. The, uh, uh, America's coming back. You know, it's all due to Bidenomics. Now he's just hoping that you haven't been to the grocery store or the gas station in the last, you know, two weeks. But that kind of advertising works. It absolutely works. So it's going to be really hard for the Republicans to counter the massive finance advantage of the Democrats and their billionaire communist oligarchs. It's really going to be difficult. Um, I, 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 you know, that's, I think, their key advantage there. You know, you can do a lot of things with money. You can advertise. You can get out the vote, whatever you want that to mean, whether you want that to mean uh, knocking on doors or ballot harvesting or setting up uh, ballot factories, whatever. Uh, buying votes, you can certainly do that with a billion dollars. Uh, the, the Republicans, the only chance they have to possibly stay with the Democrats, they would have to somehow unify behind Trump. That means 
the Nikki Haley people, the, the Chris Christie people, these are the people with money in the Republican Party, the Mitt Romney people. And some of these people have already said, no way, no how, I'm out, I'm voting Democrat. Like Mitt Romney, who's really a scumbag scumbag. That, that's a guy there who stood for president just over 10 years ago. And, yeah, he made promises to the conservatives in the Republican Party. And for the most part, the conservatives came out and supported the guy. And said, all right, we're with you. You know, we hate Barack Obama. This guy's a Marxist. We don't want him. We want somebody better. You're better, if marginally. We'll, we'll go with you. And now we're shoes on the other foot. And the, if you want to call it the populist side of the Republican Party, has the reins. Mitt Romney's gone. He's not, you know, he's out. He said, I'm not supporting that. No way. So, you know, I, I view the Mitt Romneys of the world as total disgusting scumbags. Uh, but they have money, and we're not getting it, so that's bad. Uh, this guy has money. Now, he could help us out a lot if he threw his weight behind the Republican ticket. He could help us a lot if he just stays neutral and lets people talk freely on his X platform and doesn't censor us. You know, that's, that's, we got to hope for that at a minimum. Yeah, if he really wanted to help us, he could, you know, cut a couple checks for a couple, uh, several million dollars, and that would help. It, it, maybe a hundred million would help more, but <laughs> we'll take whatever we can get. Uh, and then here's a, probably the biggest ace in the Democrats' pocket is the fact that if the game looks like it's getting away from the Democrats and it looks like they're going to lose at any point in time, they could just flip over the table. They could just flip over the table. What's that mean? Replace Biden. Put someone else on the ticket. Uh, I remember there was a show we used to watch as kids called Star Blazers. Anybody remember that one? The anime show where uh, they're on this, uh, the battleship Yamoto, I believe. And they're, they've made this into a spaceship, and they're going throughout the galaxy, and they're going to go get some, this is a, a season two, I believe it was, there's some magic potion that's going to save the Earth. And they get back, and they're going to fight the Comet Empire, and they, they've got all their little battleships lined up, and they fire at the Comet Empire, and they think they defeated the thing because now the big cloud is destroyed and it evaporates. And they think they've won. And then here behind the cloud is this giant war machine that then just proceeds to wipe them out. In other words, they thought they had won and they hadn't. And it turned out they were, in fact, they had lost. <laughs> and, and I think that at any point in time, I think this might happen at the convention. The later in the cycle it happens, I think, is better for the Democrats. In other words, that gives the Republicans less time to try to attack whoever the nominee is. Let's say Gavin Newsom. Everybody says that's the most likely scenario. Uh, I think it's possible it could be Hillary. Um, you know she wants to be there. I mean, she's just... Yeah, you know, waiting to be courted, standing not too far away, saying, oh goodness, when will they ask me to save the day? And I'm sure Barack Obama's over in the corner going, never, but, you know, Hillary's still waiting. She's constitutionally eligible to uh, be president, unlike uh, Obama. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know it could happen during the primaries until... Biden locks up the nomination because there are other, and I don't even know who these jabronis are running against Biden. There's nobody serious. So, um, you know, the serious guy, they forced him to go independent, uh, which that's another, I, that should go in the good column. Uh, RFK Jr. goes in the good column. He's pulling more votes from Biden than he is Trump. 
Now, I know some of you people are going to say, well, that's not the way I read the polls. You know, uh, some of you poli-sci experts out there like myself who have read the polls go, well, some, some here, here Trump's worse off in the uh, three-way matchup. Here he's better off. He's worse off, he's better off. No, don't get it twisted. He's definitely pulling more votes from Biden. My reasoning, Biden won't give him Secret Service protection. That's how I know. It, it, it has nothing to do with campaign money. Biden would just be perfectly happy if the guy got shot and he's out of the race. If he was pulling votes from Trump, oh, that guy'd be protected tomorrow. But he's been pulling votes from Biden, so he gets no Secret Service protection. So that goes in the good column, that these third-party candidates, uh, Cornell West, another one, who it looks like he's going to hang in there to the bitter end, Jill Stein. These are all candidates who are going to pull votes from Biden. This is good for Trump. <coughs> Nevertheless, I think Biden will have to wrap up the nomination before they can replace him. In other words, he's going to have to control the outcome entirely when he says, all right, I'm stepping aside. And the only reason he'd step aside is that he's certain that he can control his replacement. Because he's got certain things he needs to have before he would step aside. So that's why I'm thinking the convention, which is in August, which is kind of late in the game. I, I, you know, it might happen before that. In other words, you know, wouldn't have to wait to the convention, I don't think. Uh, you could probably do it any time after he secures enough a, a, a delegates. That could be like May or June. Um, but it all would depend on the polling. In other words, what their internal polling is telling them. Uh, or his health. I mean, at some point, perhaps his health may deteriorate to the point they simply can't cover it up anymore. All right, a lot more to talk about. And we'll do it in another episode. I could talk forever on this. And I'm sure some of you want to hear it, and more of you don't. So we'll talk again. I'm Eric Arnold. I believe in free speech. You better do something and vote Trump this uh, November if you believe in free speech, because if you don't, you probably won't have it anymore. We'll talk again, signing off.